Did you know the disposal of old planes is a thriving multi-billion dollar business? Or that it's recently spawned a dangerous shadow market in counterfeit aircraft parts? Hop on board and buckle up for takeoff as we ask exactly what happens to old airplanes. You might wonder why airplanes need to die in the first place. After all, they're made of metal, right? Can't they just be maintained theoretically forever? Not quite. Most modern airliners have a built-in lifespan of around 25 to 30 years. What usually brings them down in the end is far more insidious than regular wear and tear. An aircraft's lifespan is usually measured in so-called pressurization cycles. What does that mean? Every time an aircraft takes off, it has to pressurize its cabin so passengers and crew can breathe comfortably at high altitudes. This pressurization naturally puts substantial stress on the frame of the aircraft, which inevitably over time leads to metal fatigue. Over many thousands of flying hours, this fatigue can become deadly. In 1988, a flight attendant named Clarabel Lansing tragically lost her life when an aging Aloha Airlines Boeing 737 suffered explosive mid-air decompression. Boeing 747s are rated for 35,000 pressurization cycles, which typically works out at around 150,000 flight hours. Interestingly, nippy short-haul planes age faster than bigger long-haul jets for this very reason. Short haulers necessarily pressurize and depressurize multiple times a day, which accelerates their decline. Carriers, especially the big famous passenger airlines, don't want to wait until metal fatigue becomes problematic. So halfway through a plane's rated lifespan, a thorough assessment is made as to whether it's worth more in part than as a working airliner. Often, a newer, more fuel-efficient model has become available that makes more sense for the airline to trade in for. It's certainly not unheard of for jets approaching the autumn of their lives to move on to exciting new things. They might be sold onto countries with less stringent regulations and run into the ground, metaphorically at least. Big Boeing 747s often end up being refitted as freight carriers. Smaller planes can wind up working in highly specialist niches, like the Dutch workhorse Fokker 100s, which are so robust they do a roaring trade supplying remote mining outposts in the Australian outback. Some lucky planes end up as cherished museum pieces, like the few remaining Concords, or refitted into lavish sky palaces for the likes of hip-hop star Drake or shady oligarch Roman Abramovich, who jets around in a private pimped-out Boeing 767 named Bandit. This is rare, though. Most planes, almost all planes, eventually are broken down for parts. The volumes and prices associated with the airline parts trade can be staggering, with a global market for second-hand plane components projected to be worth some $6 billion in 2022. This market is so lively, it spawned its own class of dedicated investment outfits and even specialist hedge funds. Even more astonishingly, the airline spare parts industry is locked in constant battle with counterfeiters, who supply a hungry worldwide market with cheap knockoff components. It's believed that as many as 2% of all spare airliner parts on the market today are counterfeit, with obvious and terrifying safety implications. A Paris startup called Safe Flights has been trying to use blockchain certification to stamp out this decidedly dodgy practice. So, why is the spares market so lucrative? A modern aircraft is made up of some 350,000 parts. Most of the value, upwards of 75%, derives from the engines alone. Airlines typically prefer to replace a failing component, like an engine fan blade, than attempt a risky repair. So defunct planes essentially become money-spinning organ banks for their airworthy brethren. There's serious cash to be made here. For instance, just the winglets on a retired Boeing 737 can fetch as much as $650,000 US dollars on the second-hand market. And with roughly 11,000 airline retirements scheduled to take place over the coming decade, you can start to see why dead planes are such big business. So where are these massive beasts stashed while they're broken down for parts? Storage airports, also known as graveyards, still more evocatively as boneyards, are essentially vast open-air parking lots for planes. The biggest are in the southwestern United States, where an arid local climate and bountiful cheap land helps stave off rusting and decay on these extremely valuable assets. The largest in the world, Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona, babysits some 4,000 military aircraft, among them F-16 fighter jets, combat helicopters, and colossal Lockheed C-5 Galaxy transport aircraft. As for civilian planes, Mojave Air and Spaceport is the proverbial daddy, with 1,000 or so dormant aircraft shimmering silently in the desert haze. On arrival at these facilities, planes are cleaned to remove any salt that could lead to corrosion. Fuel tanks are typically drained and flushed with lubricant, and the tyres dressed up in a thick film of specialist mylar to stave off deterioration in the merciless heat. When the last valuable component has been stripped out and sold to the highest bidder, whatever remains is sold on for scrap. 
The fuselage of a Boeing 747 is said to be worth about $43,000 scrap value, and the boneyards are incentivized to move quickly at this stage. This is because the moment an airliner is decommissioned, it's considered industrial waste and subject to local environmental statutes. This partly explains why European boneyards, like at Kemble in the UK or Tarb in France, are so much smaller than their US counterparts. For one thing, Europe's climate is more unforgiving, as is its regulatory framework. Still, there are some more imaginative uses for old planes that entrepreneurial types come up with from time to time. For instance, a New York architecture studio called Lowtech has proposed buying up 200 cheap Boeing 727 and 737 fuselages and turning them into a library in Mexico. That's not actually built yet, but plenty of airframes enjoy fulfilling second life. Take this upcycled 747 plonked at a parking lot beside Sweden's Arlanda Airport. It's a smart hotel with 25 rooms and a plush honeymoon suite up in the cockpit. There's also a budget hostel stashed backpacker style in the economy cabin. This kindergarten in Rustavi, Georgia, was repurposed from a retired Yakovlev 42 aircraft. In Zurich, a Soviet-era Ilyushin IL-14 has been transformed into an upscale restaurant, while this decommissioned Douglas DC-3 in Taupo, New Zealand, serves as an outlet of fast food giant McDonald's. We're loving it. Internal plane components, such as drinks trolleys, have been upcycled by aspirational German design firm Skypack into snazzy closets. California-based Moto Art Studio remakes bigger aircraft components like engine housings or segments of fuselage into upscale office furniture, with a blue-chip client list including Microsoft and, aptly enough, Boeing. Perhaps the strangest second life for any recycled plane is this former Malaysia Airlines 747, which was deliberately sunk off the coast of Bahrain and transformed into an artificial reef and one-off scuba diving destination. Such imaginative reuse is to be encouraged, so long as it's done sensitively. The boneyards of the world are rapidly filling up with unwanted 747s, a trend set to accelerate with the ravages of the COVID-19 pandemic on the travel industry. Eco-conscious aviation industry body AFRA, the Aircraft Fleet Recycling Association, reckons 70% of aircraft parts are recyclable today. It plans to get this figure up to 95%, with promised improvements in technology and responsible disposal practices. Well, anything's better than just winging it. What do you think? Can you come up with a better use for the thousands of aircraft currently sitting idle in the boneyards of the world? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more plain speaking tech content.